Good morning, everybody. And happy Mother's Day. To all the ladies who put up with our, can I say, can I say stuff? Yeah, yeah, our stuff, yeah. It's church. To all the ladies who put up with all of us and all our junk and yet teach us everything, we thank you and uh, we praise God for your lives. Amen. Amen. Now let us rise and worship. Yeah. Saturday was silent, surely it was through. Since when is it possible ever stop to Friday's is a poem, Sunday's empty tomb. Since when is it possible ever stop to The sound of dry bones rattling. This is the great Macadamian walk again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of dry bones rattling.
Ezekiel 37. I felt the Lord's power take control of me, and the Spirit took me to a valley. The Lord showed me around and all over the ground. All that I found were bones dried out from the sun. He said, son, can these bones come back to life? I replied, Lord God, only you can answer that. He then told me to say, dry bones, listen to the words of your Lord. I, God, will put breath into you, and once again you will live. I will wrap your bones with muscle and skin and breathe life into you. Then you will know I am the king of all kings. I did what the Lord said, but before I could finish, I heard a rattling sound. The bones on the ground were coming together, and muscle and skin covered the bones again, but they had no life in them. The Lord said, now say to the wind, God commands you to blow from every direction and breathe life into these bodies so they could live again. And as soon as I did, the wind blew amongst the bodies and they came to life again. And they stood up and we all stood up big enough to be an army, an army of God. I hear the sound. 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 Happy Mother's Day and welcome to Just Church. We're so excited you're all here with us today. Uh, you might notice in the back we have something a little different going on. That's our Mother's Day photo booth that we want to take pictures of families together so you can send them to your mom or you can take them with your mom. We'll put them on uh, the Just Church page later today and then we'll actually print them and have them here for next week. So please do that. We're going to be sit setting up right after service. So just come on over, and we have some fun things to put on, some hats, some funny glasses and signs you can hold and stuff like that. So that's a good thing. All right. Uh, let's see. We have uh, Honduras Mission Info Session is next Sunday. So after service next Sunday, we're going to be meeting right here, right? And we're going to talk about Trust Without Borders, our mission arm, um, and our trip that we had and the trip that we're going to be uh, planning in January. So come on out for that. Uh, women's breakfast is next Saturday, May 20th, 9 a.m., over at the community hall. So if you are interested in eating and being with some fabulous ladies, come on out for that, women. Uh, Heart of the Life group is the next Saturday. Chris, Crystal does that. What? No, no, the next Saturday. After that, May 27th at 10 a.m., 
over at the Plastow Public Library. And if you have any questions about that, see Crystal Souza, she's right there. And then the uh, last thing, but not the least, every Tuesday night, what's the best thing on a Tuesday evening? Celebrate recovery. Celebrate recovery. And so uh, Diana puts on a fabulous meal with her team that she has over there at 545 p.m. That, this is located at our uh, space above A1 Deli, 92 Merrimack Street. And then we have large group at 630 and breakouts after that at 730. So that's all the business. Let's get our hearts and minds ready to get back into worship and celebrate our Heavenly Father. Lord God, we just come before you today. We are so excited to be in this place and to be your family, this church body, this church family that you've created, the body of Christ. And we are his bride, and he is our head. And so we look forward, God, to be in the church family together in this world. So we ask that you bind us together through your Holy Spirit. Help us to support and encourage and bear and share with one another. Help us to walk through life together in the good times and the bad. And when we are struggling, Lord, help us to, to reach out to one another. And when we're having great times, Lord, help us to reach and connect and share all of that together. We want to pray for one another. We want to love each other. We want to gather together. And then we want to share your love with the world. And we need your power to do that, Lord. So help us do that. Give us, just, you know, empower the gifts and talents that you've given each one of us to be used for your kingdom and for your glory. And we pray all this in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now let us rise and worship the Lord our God.
song that I love are all my choices because God gives us choice yes it's like one of the best blessings he's given us but it's also a double-edged sword because all our choices sometimes bring us to a path where we so far away from him the wreckage of our life is in crumbles we're holding these pieces falling out our hand that we need him to put us back together because the truth is your choice might lead you away from him but no matter where you end up on that road or end of the line, he's still there to hold your hand and greet you. Because when you're in those pieces, he is the glue that will put you back together. Sing with me, come on. When I was your foe, still your love fought for me. Yes, it did. You have been so, so good to me. So good, yeah. When I felt no worth, you paid it all.
Amen, 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 amen. Lord God, we thank you for always coming after us, for your reckless love, for knowing that you chase after us, Lord God, because you just want a relationship with us, God. You just want us to know you better. Lord Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for just loving us so much that you never give up on us, even when we give up on ourselves. Lord God, we love you and we thank you for all that you do. It's in your name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. Look at all you guys here on Mother's Day. Wow, this place is packed. It's not because we took out a row either. It's packed, okay? Good morning, everybody. Wasn't that a great worship? Give it up for this worship team. Awesome, awesome, awesome. My name is Pastor James. I am the discipleship pastor here at Just Church, and I get the honor to bring to you the connection cards. The connection cards are a great way for us to be in touch with you and to update you on anything that is going on, on events like, oh, I don't know, Mother's Day. She's good. She's good. Just keep it going. Just keep it going. There we are. Bye. Okay, so on the back of the card, this is a great way for you to uh, get into uh, a little bit more of the church. You don't just show up on a Sunday. You can be part of a life group. You can be part of a ministry team, and we would love to have you. And lastly, on the back of the card is a spot where you can put prayer requests. Guys, Everybody needs prayer, every single one of us, and this is a great way for you to actually put down and communicate to us, because we'll be praying for you. It's even better if we know what to pray for. Does that make sense, guys? And definitely put down celebrations, too, because we love to hear what God is doing in your lives. And now I get to pray. Father God, as we... Listen to this word from you, Lord God. Allow us to open up our hearts and open up our minds, Lord God. Allow us to take away any distractions as we hear this message. And allow us to apply what we learned here today. Because the way that we grow is through application. So that way we can get better and more and more like you and less and less like ourselves. Lord God, we thank you. We thank you for your word. Lord God, I want to give a special thanks to all the mothers out there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's in your name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. And here's Pastor Rachel. Have we come up with theme music yet? Guys, Just tech team, where's all it. the theme music? There it is. baseball fans, and, and most of you know that I am, every batter that comes up has their walk-up music, okay? So they choose it. It's their specific music. So I, I joked last week that I should have walk-up music because it's always like kind of an awkward transition. So we are going to try out four or five different songs over the next few weeks, and then y'all are going to get a chance to vote, and you're going to decide what the best walk-up music. So that one, just in case you don't know it, it's I Want You Back, Jackson 5, so keep that in your, in your mind. If you like that one, you can vote for it later. <laughs> all right, good morning. It is so great to see you all. I got a little ring up here, so I think I'm a little hot maybe. I'm not going to say that about myself, but... My microphone's a little hot, so, <laughs> All right, so we are in a sermon series that we have been calling, I Am a Church Member. And it is based on a book. I didn't bring my book up this time. Uh, it's based on a book by the same name, uh, by a man named Tom Rayner. And we actually have those books in the back. I think many of you have gotten them. If you have not gotten one, um, I would recommend you grab one on the way out. We just got a new uh, stash of them this week, so... 
feel free to grab one on the way out if you don't have one, or if you do have one and you'd like to give one away, that's fine too. And so what we've been talking about is what it means to be a part of God's family in this local body of Christ that we call the church. And all the past messages are on Facebook, on YouTube, and on our webpage. So if you, if you missed any of those and you want to catch up, feel free to check that out there. But as I said, it's based on that book, and it's a really great thing to read through that book and have that as a guide to our different messages. And so this is the fifth chapter of that book that we're going to talk about today. And it is called, I Will Lead My Family to Be a Healthy Church Member. So it works out great. It's Mother's Day, talking about family. So the first thing I want to say here is that this message is for everyone. Because I know there might be some of you out there who are thinking, well, I'm single, I don't have any kids, or at least any, any children age kids. You may be thinking, well, this isn't for me. I'm out. I'm going to do some other things, look on my phone and all that. But as we talk about the church itself is a family. We're not just a church. We're a family. And we're not just like a family. We are a family. And this is not just something I've made up and I keep saying to you. This is biblical. You know, we've talked about Paul multiple times during the sermon series. He was a church planter, like we are, planting a new church. But he did this every single place he went. But then he went on to the next church. He kept in touch with them, though, by writing these letters. And many of those letters make up the majority of the New Testament of the Bible, and they teach us what it means to be the church. And so in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 4 to 5, Paul writes this. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Christ Jesus. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. So Paul writes that we are literally adopted into God's family. And that's not it. Throughout the Bible, we're referred to over and over and over as God's children, and he is referred to as our father. There's so many passages, but I'm going to just give you a couple. Luke chapter 12, verse 32 says, So don't be afraid, little flock, for it gives your father great happiness to give you the kingdom. I love that, little flock. Isn't that cute? We're the little flock. And then 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 says, See how very much our Father loves us, for he calls us his children. And that is what we are. So God is our Father. And on top of that, we are known as co-heirs with Christ. Romans chapter 8, verse 17 says, Now if we are children, then we are heirs. Heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ if indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we may also share in his glory. So we are co-heirs with Jesus. He was God's son. We are God's children, making Jesus our brother. And if we're referred to over and over and over as brothers and sisters in Christ to one another. And Jesus actually said himself in Matthew chapter 12, verse 50, anyone who does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. And in fact, the family is the primary way the early church is identified. And that starts right in the book of Acts, where we see the birth of the church and throughout the New Testament after that. And the greatest example of this is seen because the word disciple that's used all through the Gospels to refer to Jesus' followers, it actually falls away after the book of Acts. And it's replaced by the words brethren or brother or sister. So it's clear that we are intended to be a family. So why did I go into that big explanation of that? Well, we take it back to our original topic. I will lead my family to be healthy church members. So even if you're single, even if you don't have any children, no matter what your relationship status or your family makeup, if you're part of the church, you have a family that you can lead even if it's just the people here in this room. If you're a part of the church, you're a part of a family. So this message is for everyone, whether you have the traditional mom, dad, kids, family, or something that looks totally different. This is for you. So listen up.
Before we get down to kind of the specifics about how we're called to lead our families as church members, I want to touch on something, something that we haven't discussed yet. That it's important, it's an important point to understand. It's not something that's intuitive to us, and that's God's relationship with the church. Now, throughout the New Testament, the church is referred to metaphorically numerous times as the bride, the bride of Christ, the bride of God, and Jesus as the bridegroom. Now, I'm not going to get too far into these passages because it would take an entire Sunday to even pull one apart. So I would encourage you to look them up. I'm happy to sit down and talk about them with you, but let me know in advance so I can prepare, okay, because there's some pretty deep theological perspectives in there. But for now, trust me that these scriptures exist throughout the New Testament where the church is related to Jesus as his bride. Now, I know that may seem really weird in some ways, right? But think about this. Think about a wedding day and the joy that's present. And think about that moment when the bride walks down the aisle and all eyes are on her. And you get to see that very first glimpse. And the groom looks at her. And it is a magical moment filled with love, joy, and amazement. And I think we actually have a picture um, to emphasize this. You got that there, Joe? So that's my son-in-law, Mitch, and that's the very first moment when he saw my daughter, Julia, walking down the aisle, and that is my very favorite picture from the wedding. All of the different pictures we had, that is my very favorite one. And you can really see that emotion when he saw her for the ver very first time. And that's how Jesus looks at his church. Not at the very beginning, not at, at the very first moment, but all the time every single day. And we as Christians are intended to follow Jesus. We are intended to be his disciples. And what it means to be his disciples is that we are in a process where we are becoming more and more like him. We use the, the phrase that's used in the Bible, which is being conformed to the image of Christ. And that is a lifetime process. But if we're being conformed to the image of Christ, we're not called to merely go to church. We're not called to just be a part of the church. We're called to fall deeply in love with our church and to serve in our church with a love that is absolutely unexplainable sometimes. And that's why it's so important to be part of his church. That's why it's so important to teach our families to love the church as well. So all of that said, let's talk specifics. How can we lead our families into being healthy church members? Well, there's four things that Tom Rainer lays out in the book. So we're going to look at those one at a time. The first one is praying with and for our families. And we started talking a lot about last week how we, are, we should be praying for our church and our church leaders in particular. But here's the thing. The family that prays together stays together. And those of you who don't have significant others, it actually starts there. And for those who do have significant others, if you're not used to praying together, it is really, really weird at first. It feels very uncomfortable. But the more you do it, the more comfortable it will get and the more powerful it will be. Now, if you're single and you don't have a significant other, you can pray for your family members, you can pray for your church family, or you can start praying for that purpose, person that God has purposed for you. And I can tell you that I've been praying for my kids' future spouses since before I knew any of their names. And as you can see, it's worked out pretty good so far. And I don't know, where's, I don't know if they're here. They're, well, that's what I was just going to say. So my daughter, Lily, and her fiancé are getting married. Oh, he's standing in the back. He's, he's standing in the back talking. He doesn't even know I'm talking about him. So he's right there. So. It's worked out pretty well. We got two down, and we got two to go. God doesn't disappoint. So no matter what your family may look like, pray with and for them. And pray together for our church. 
Page 60 in the book says, part of the opportunity and honor of being a church member is the teaching of our family to love the church. And that teaching often begins by praying together as a family for the church where God has placed us. So that's the first thing the book talks about, how we can lead our families into being healthy church members, is praying with and for our families. The second way we can lead our families into being healthy church members is constantly, on a regular basis, worshiping together. Now, if you're married, that means worshiping together in church with your spouse. If you're a parent, that includes your children, your grandchildren. If you're single, maybe that's your immediate family. Maybe that's your friends. Maybe it's your church family. Or maybe it's your coworkers that you invite. And whether they're believers or not, those of us, especially our families, they deserve to see that it's important to us to be together in worship. They deserve to see the privilege of being a part of the body of Christ. We have to consider our families as our mission field. It might be your immediate family. It might be your spouse, your parents, your kids, your grandkids, whatever. Or maybe it's your extended family. Maybe they need to know how much God loves them. And you are God's missionary in their lives. They need to see the church is a priority for you. They need to see the love that you have for the church. That's a witness to them about how important it is. 1 Corinthians speaks about this specifically in the context of a believer married to a non-believer when Paul wrote this. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, if you are a man with a wife who is not a believer, but who still wants to live with you, hold on to her. If you are a woman with a husband who is not a believer, but he wants to live with you, hold on to him. The unbelieving husband shares to an extent in the holiness of his wife, and the unbelieving wife is likewise touched by the holiness of her husband. Otherwise, your children would be left out. As it is, they also are included in the spiritual purposes of God. Maybe you've been trying to reach them and you're frustrated because you think that they aren't paying attention. Don't give up. It's there somewhere in the back of their mind. Keep praying, keep serving, and keep watering the seed that you've planted. Don't be pushy. Just keep them mindful that you do what you do because of Jesus and because of your church. That's powerful stuff, man. That's right out of the Bible. Now, I know worshiping together as a family can be a hard thing in this world today. I know that life gets in the way. And there's many things that encroach on our Sunday mornings than ever were there before in the past. There's sports, there's social events, there's work, whatever it may be. And I can understand that sometimes that is unavoidable for you to be present in worship together as a family. But I'm going to tell you, with all the love in my heart, in order to be a healthy, functioning church member, this needs to be a priority in your lives. Tom Rainer, the author of this book we're studying, he also has a blog um, where he talked recently about the frequency of church attendance for the average church member. Now, pre-pandemic, it was pretty widely accepted that the average church member attended service about a little bit over two times a month, so like 2.3 times a month. I'm not a mathematician. I don't understand how the 0.3 works, but 2.3 times a month, okay? However, in his recent blog, he said since the pandemic, that number has decreased to a solid one. So most church members, and this is a church member, this is someone who's actively involved in the church, not just someone who flows through every once in a while, only attends church one time a month on average. So we're going to kind of give the benefit of the doubt, and we're going to say it's one and a half, right? 1.5. Now, I think we actually do much better than that here at Just Church, but we're just talking about kind of the average right now. So think of this. If average attendance is 1.5 times per month, that's 37.5% of the time. Now, let me ask you a question. If your kids only went to school 37.5% of the time, how do you think they would be doing? You think their teachers or anybody else at their school would be happy? 
What if you only showed up for 37.5 of your shifts at work? Think you'd be doing your job pretty well? Think you'd still have a job? Probably not. What if your kids who play sports only showed up for 37.5% of their practices or their matches? Think they'd still be on the team? Probably not. If your family only attends church 37.5% of the time, how much of a priority is that? How much are you truly going to be getting out of worship? out of the teaching and the fellowship with your brothers and sisters? And what type of a witness is that to those around you about how much of a priority church is in your life? And I'm telling you right now, I don't say this out of any judgment. This is purely out of love. Because Lord knows, if I wasn't the pastor, I probably would not be here every single week either. So I get it. And you know what? My kids aren't here every single week either. Now, two of them live close to here, two of them don't. And none of them are in their home churches every single week, I can tell you right there. And they're adults, and they need to make their own decisions. But here's what I will tell you. Two of our kids are actively involved in this church. Two of our kids are in attendance more often than not, the two that live here. And that's their choice, not ours. Some of you may know, some of you may not, that when we decided to plant Just Church four years ago, our daughter Lily was in college at Southeastern University in Lakeland, Florida, and she felt the calling to come home because she felt like she needed to be involved in this church. And so she left school and she came home. She moved home and she dedicated in service to this church. She moved her school, she moved everything and came home. And look what happened. She met a godly man. And she serves this church really, really faithfully. And then I got another kid. <laughs> and he's actually going to come and he's going to tell you himself. All right. Ah, uh, you need Mike 8, Mike 8. Speaker Mike? Who's got it? Hello, <laughs> oh, there we go. Thank you. There you go, kid. All right. Hello. Good morning. How's everyone doing? Woo! So as some of you may know, most of you, um, that's my mom, Pastor Rachel, my dad, Pastor John. He's probably somewhere back there. Um, and Pastor James's best friend. You know, I see you out there. Yeah. Um, well, growing up in the church, you know, it was, it was great. I loved it. I did. I really did. But, um, that doesn't mean it was all that easy. Um, there are definitely sacrifices to it. Um, especially with, you know, when you're younger, um, you don't really know what's going on before this. Um, I, growing up, I had three main churches, basically. There was... Um, our first church, which is the one that, you know, right around the corner, right around the corner from, uh, from here. And then the one we, we went to before this was the main one that I kind of grew up in. Um, but like I said, wasn't all that easy. Uh, you know, once you get into that middle school, high school range, um, I was kind of known as the, the church, the church boy, you know, I, that's, that's kind of the title that I got, the holy one, the, you know, the all pure uh, so, you know, it was, it was, I mean, it's not a bad title, don't get me wrong, you know, um, just middle school kids, high school kids, they're not all the nicest about it, um, so definitely, you know, the reputation was good with the friends that I had, but, you know, some people that, you know, grew up in the church and, uh, you know, didn't have the same experiences that I did, uh, they grew up, you know, with different, the church had different ideals, you know, some different experiences they weren't uh they didn't take too kindly to to the fact um so you know i had to had to sacrifice people that i could have gotten to know people that you know i could have had a relationship with and um you know it wasn't all that easy in high school um but a lot of sacrifices that i had to make um i gave my sundays every sunday 
Uh, most of the sports that I wanted to play were on Sundays, so I had to I had to give those up. You know, I had to had to show that I wanted to be a member, especially in in high school. Um, you know, we had track meets some Sundays, um, and I had to you know, of course, like you said, thirty seven percent. 0.5%, you don't stay on the team, but I mean, I was on the team, I tried my best, but there's some things to me that, that were more important. Um, some of the biggest sacrifices that I had to do was a lot of the summers that I had were spent. Um, we, Soul Fest, many of you probably know that, um, but that didn't feel as much as an obligation, but doesn't mean it wasn't a sacrifice. You know, you go camping with, with a bunch of people and you know, all in these sweaty tents, and uh, you know, doesn't uh, doesn't doesn't feel like the summer you want when you're when you're bundled up with all these people and it smells like feet all the time. So, <laughs> you know, but but once you get to those concerts and once you listen to the, them play, it's something else. It's something that you've never experienced. You know, you you're sitting there and you look through the whole crowd, and everyone's just on the same like wavelength, everyone knows what it's about, what they're there for, and it's, it's incredible. It's just incredible to see. And then Summers, one of the biggest sacrifices that I ever made that at first, I'll be honest, I didn't want to make was Soul Fest. I mean, with not Soul Fest, it was uh, Honduras. Honduras was, I mean, I was, oh, geez, 16? I was 16. When you're 16, you don't want to go to a, you know, a different place that, you know, is one of the highest uh, crime rates in, in the world. But, all right, all right, all right. It's fantastic. If anyone wants to go, go. Trust me. It is, it is probably the best sacrifice I ever made. It was that experience changed my whole life. To see those kids, to see what this church really meant to them and, you know, it kind of opened my eyes to what this church really meant for me. And from that moment on, it didn't become an obligation. It became a family. It, it, became, it became everything I ever wanted, that I wanted to look for. And it was, it was fantastic. Um, so skipping a few years, as many of you know, I moved to Boston recently. I, I did um, in September. And um, when I left, it was really hard. I had to, well at the time I thought I had to give up the church. So I moved down there and I did not give my all to this church anymore. And it was, you know, I focused more on, on worldly stuff. You know, I had to go get a job. I had to, you know, provide for the, for the girl that I was with. And um, it was really, really difficult. It felt super separated, super isolated. I had no one in Boston except for her and you know, I was far away from my family, my church family, and, you know, that was, I had never done that before. I had never been away from, from the people I cared about that much, and, you know, it, 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 was, it was rough. It was very rough. Um, I'd, I'd try to watch the services, but, I don't know, I just couldn't, just because it, so, it was so sad, saddening to me that I couldn't be with them, um, and obviously, um, unfortunately, now I'm moved back home, and for, fortunately, yes, we'll say fortunately, I am moved back home now, um, and I could not have had a warmer welcome. I, I came home, I was, everyone in this church was so supportive of me, and it was, you know, it was such a difficult time, and I still struggle with it, but it was like, it was like I'm, I've known everyone here forever. They, we, I came back home, and it was... Just everyone was here for me, and it was, it was incredible. So this church family is, is really, really something. We have something special here. I've never seen it before. It's something, it's something incredible. You know, I, being a member of this church has, has made my whole life, you know, from when I was young all the way up to now. You know, the family that I have is, is incredible. But the only thing I, the last thing I wanted to talk about was a certain person that really um, made, me, uh, made me feel like family and unfortunately he's not here anymore. Um, 
Ray Ray was like an uncle to me. And um, he was, he really felt like my actual uncle. He, he would check on me from time to time. He'd always be there every Sunday. You know, it, he really wrapped this whole family. It was like he had long arms, and he was just bringing this whole church together. And he, you know, without him, we're still a family, but we we feel like we're missing one person. But we got to remember, he's always here. He's always going to be with us. One of these chairs he's sitting at, you know, he's, he's doing his thing that he normally does, you know. He's, he's still here. So I guess in conclusion, we'll say that, sure, it was, it was rough growing up in the church. And, you know, when I was younger, it, 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 wasn't, it wasn't easy. But when my parents gave me that choice, what was it? When, when was it? 16? 16, my parents gave me that choice whether or not I wanted to, to be part of a church and wanted to, wanted to keep going. I never regret saying yes. I, I want to give my all to this church, and, you know, I, I love each and every one of you like you were my, my blood, and, you know, let's just keep this family going and just keep growing and growing, and like I said, I love all you guys, every single one of you. Yeah. Sorry. Let me see this. Happy Mother's Day to everyone out here, too. Thanks, love. Um, so I just have to say, I had no idea what he was going to say. Um, he was supposed to write it down for me, and he didn't. But, um, but I, couldn't, I couldn't have asked for uh, anything, anything better than that. Um, so that's my two kids that are here, but I have two kids that aren't in the area. And uh, something that's really cool is that very often they will call me and they will say, hey, I was watching online this morning, and, and I'm like, what? You were watching online this morning? If I was 20, the last thing I would have been doing on a Sunday morning is watching my parents' church online. <laughs> now, I wasn't a Christian at 20, and neither were my parents, so that wouldn't have happened anyways. But that's a pretty awesome thing to hear as a parent. Now, the point is that even if my kids aren't here, they know the, they understand the importance of being the church. And that comes from years and years and years of them watching and knowing that it was a priority. And that doesn't mean that things didn't come up. It doesn't mean that we never missed church. That absolutely did happen. But when it needed to, there was always a discussion. There would always be a decision where we would have to figure out what needed to be prioritized. And sometimes the things of the world won out, and sometimes church did. But there was never a time as a family that it wasn't clear that being the church was our main priority. That being gathered as a church family was one of the most important things in our family's life. And I'm telling you, our family isn't perfect, so I don't hold us up as, as the, the example. Um, but it's something that God impressed on our hearts. And I'm so grateful now when I can look in the rear view mirror and see what God has done in their lives. So that was a long one. All right, I promise the rest of them won't be that long. Third, the third thing we can do in, pre in preparing our kids to be part of a healthy church, to be healthy church members, is preparing them for the understanding that they need to have reasonable expectations and teaching grace. Because church is a family, and like we've talked about previously, that means that as members of a family, there's going to be someone who frustrates you. There's going to be someone who offends you or makes you angry. And if there isn't, you're that person. So just keep that in mind. And that happens in families all the time, right? So why should we expect that this would be any different? No family is perfect. No family member is perfect. No church is perfect. No church member is perfect. And you are not perfect. We have to help each other and our families to understand and accept this. Because unlike a blood family, you can actually leave this one. That's a reality. But the thing is, and if you've never been through this, the separation of a church family, it is painful. It is absolutely painful. 
painful. And as we've talked about, it's not always the best. There's times God calls us somewhere else, and that's okay when we leave well like that. But when we leave because someone's made us upset or we don't like the color that the church has been painted or we're not crazy about that song we've started singing, that is not the best. And as we talked about in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take that speck out of your eye, when all the time there's a plank in your own? You hypocrite. First take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. And it's important we love that way in church, and it's important that we demonstrate that to our family and our friends who may be watching. Because Jesus intended that the church be a place where flawed people learn to love a perfect God, and we learn to love other flawed people. All right, fourth and last way that we can lead our families into being healthy church members is by serving together. And this is the counterpart of worshiping together, right? Whether on a Sunday morning or during the week, involve your family, your significant other, your kids, your grandkids, your friends, your coworkers. They may not take you up on the offer to serve with you, but even if they don't, they see that it sets a great example, that it's a priority for you inviting them to join. And if they do take it, you up on it, it teaches the important lesson about selflessness and how God calls us to serve the needs of others. Again, my kids aren't perfect, but you know what? We had a big yard sale yesterday where we cooked burgers and all this kind of stuff, and I couldn't even be there. But Elijah and Lily, my two kids who live here, they were there. And I didn't even ask them. I actually assumed John had asked them, and I asked him later, hey, did you tell Elijah and Lily to be there? And he was like, no. I thought you told them to be there. So they were there on their own. And I'm totally proud of that because it is solely attributable to the example that's been set in our family of service to the church. And again, it's not because we're a perfect family, but it's because what a perfect God has done in us. Amen. Amen. So here's the bottom line. As we talked about in the Bible, the relationship between Jesus and the church is likened to a marriage. And in a marriage, we're called to have what's called agape love. And that's unconditional love for one another. And unconditional love can be really, really hard. Now, if someone is perfect and they meet all of your needs, it's easy to love that person, right? But that's not reality. Nobody's perfect except for Jesus. And y'all aren't married to Jesus. John and I have been married a long, 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 long time. I can hear him back there going, jeez. It'll be 30 years uh, at the end of this month. Yeah. And I can tell you, it has been hard. Hard. And it takes a lot of work. But it's worth it. And unconditional love means that you've put in that work. It means that you continue to fall deeper and deeper in love, regardless of the circumstances around you. Hello, little one. In the same way, it means that our love for the church needs to continue to grow, even if we may disagree with something, even if we may encounter disagreeable people, even if my life outside the church is busy, even if I may get bored, like we often do when relationships go on for an extended period of time. This is what we're called to do, to fall deeper and deeper in love with our local church so that we can find ways to do this, to lead our families in the church. And actually, that can be a way to refresh our love, seeing something that you've done a long time impact someone in a new way. Let's put it this way. 
God thought the local church was sufficiently important to feature it in most of the New Testament after the Gospels. So it should be that important to us. No, the church is not perfect. It's full of hypocrites like you and me, every single one of us. But it's God's plan A for sharing the love and the sacrifice of Jesus with this world. And there is no plan B. I can promise you that if you take this local church and you pour your heart into it, you will never be the same. It will change you forever. And we all need to be willing to give our families the same opportunity, the same gift, the same privilege to be a part of this family, to be a part of a church family. Let's pray together. God, we thank you so much for the opportunity to gather together. We thank you that you call us your children. We thank you that you give us the opportunity to be co-heirs with Jesus. God, we come before you today. We thank you for all that you've done in so many people's lives here, the transformation that you've made, the transformation that you've made in this church, the places that you've brought us and the place you have brought us here today. And we thank you that we can gather together. We thank you that we can celebrate mothers, those that are still here with us, those that are past, those that maybe not be our biological mothers, but mother us nonetheless. God, we thank you for all of those mothers. We thank you for everything you've done for us here. And we just ask you to continue to build us up as your church, as your bride. Allow us to be worthy of that honor. Allow us to serve one another well. Allow us to love one another well. And to love you. And to show that love to the rest of the world. We thank you and we praise you. And we pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Um, so if you've been with us, you know we've been doing pledges. There are pledges at the, at the end of every chapter of the book. Um, and so today we have the fifth pledge. And this one is, I will lead my family to be good church members of this church as well. We will pray together for our church. We will worship together in our church. We will serve together in our church. And we will ask Christ to help us fall deeper in love with his church because he gave his life for her. Um, as with the other pledges, we have um, that one in the back, and we actually have all of them in the back. So if you um, feel called to sign those, um, we are very, very grateful for that. I'm not keeping a spreadsheet. I don't see who signed them and who didn't sign them. Um, it's really between you and God. I'd love for you to give them to me so I know, um, but we do have those in the back. Um, and so before we close, we're going to have one more song from our worship team. I'd ask them to come forward. Um, but as we do, we are going to uh, prepare to collect our offering. Um, you, should be, you should have an envelope right in front of you in the seat back pocket. Um, an offering is a time that we believe belongs in our worship service because it is an act of worship. It is an act of for us to be able to give back to God just a little bit of what he's given us every single day. And, and I just want to say that um, we don't ask you to give out of obligation. It's not an expectation. It's not something that we ask you to do for, as a cover charge for being here. We're just grateful if you feel led by God to support this ministry, if you feel led to support our local church. And I promise you that we use those funds as best we can to serve the community, to reach out and let others know the love of God and how very much he desires to have a relationship with them. I also want to say that if you're visiting with us for the very first time, we are so glad you're here. And please just allow that offering to go right by you today. Um, we just want you to be our guest and let you know um, how happy we are to have you here with us today. And so um, we're going to have our worship team come up. 
Uh, they're over there. Come on up, guys. Um, and we are going to sing our last song. Um, Kristen and Dawn are going to come around with our very fancy Just Church buckets and collect um, your offering and your connection cards. So whatever you have, put it in that bucket. And uh, we're just really glad you're here with us today. Let's stand in worship. As we're singing out this song, I want you all to know that these lyrics are straight from scriptures out of the Bible. So as we're singing it, um, I invite you to receive this as a blessing over you um, as you're taking in the words. children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand 
generations and your family and your children and their children and their children and his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming and your going and you're weeping and rejoicing he is for you 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 be so, God. Thank you so much once again for all you do for us. Thank you for the opportunity to come together. We lift all of this up to you. We give you and you alone the glory that you are worthy of. And we pray all of this in the name of God, our Father in heaven. In the name of God and the person of Jesus Christ who died on the cross for each and every one of us. In the name of God and the person of the Holy Spirit who lives with and in us at all times. Amen and amen. As always, it is a privilege and an honor to worship with every single one of you. Love you so much. Happy Mother's Day. Stop and get a picture taken for your moms or for your family or for whoever, just for yourself. Doesn't matter. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. God bless.